Good morning, everybody. And a very warm welcome to St. Mary's today, whether you're here every week, joining us as a visitor or watching later online. May you know the peace of God's presence with you. The intimation, as usual, is on the order of service, but I just want to draw your attention to a few things that are coming up because we're getting into a very busy time and there's lots to be involved in and to support. And you'll see there that this afternoon, up the road at St David's Memorial Park, we've got a joint venture where Glasgow Phoenix Choir are coming to give a concert, and that's at 2.30 today, and you can pay for your ticket at the door. So I'm sure that promises to be a good afternoon. So that's today at half past two. And then looking towards next weekend, you'll see that the Young Church have their craft fair between 10 and 4 on that day. And they're looking for various help, including help to set up on the Friday evening and on the Saturday, and maybe for folks to help serve in the tea room as well. So if that's something that you can help with, then please do get in touch with Young Church. And then next Saturday, um, in the morning, you'll see that the poppy, the beautiful poppy banner is back outside. And at about 10 to 11 next, sun, next Saturday morning, um, the Kirk and Till Male Voice Choir um, will be gathering there. And we'll just have a wee time of silence and remembering together, um, accompanied by them with some song. So you're very welcome to come along and be there for that act of remembrance next Saturday morning at 10 to 11. And then, of course, next Sunday is Remembrance Sunday, and we're not here. So that's to say we're not here next Sunday. We're worshipping together at St. David's Memorial Park, and the service starts at the earlier time of half past 10. So that's 10.30 next Sunday at St. David's Memorial Park. And last but by no means least, we, of course, celebrate communion today. And so if you are worshipping with us online, then please do feel free to get yourself something to eat and something to drink so you can share in that time with us. But for now, as we prepare to worship God, let us pray. Lord Jesus, you are the light of the world who illuminates our minds, hearts and spirits that we might follow you in good and true ways. As we worship you this morning, help us to be still, to search for your light, and to find it in word, song, sacrament, and as your gathered family, here to praise and celebrate your love today. So be it. Amen. Things are a wee bit different from normal today. So, we've stilled ourselves before <coughs> our God. And haven't the mornings got a little bit darker? And the nights are fair drawn in? <laughs> and so today we come together to hear of a love that is brighter than a sparkler. A love that is warmer than a bonfire. Of a life that even today is challenging and changing lives through the Holy Spirit who draws us close and near to all who call on the name of Jesus. And so let us think about that light now in our opening hymn, 125, Lord of all being, throned afar. <coughs>
morning. Good to see you. Now, Grace, before we left for church this morning, I asked you for a couple of things, didn't I? I did, and you were... I can't... Oh, you, you were very wondering in terms of what I might say, so I've got this with me. What's that? It's your torch, yes. You pull its tail and its nose lights up. It's quite cool. You can press its chin as well. And I've got some glow sticks. And I've got a candle. And it's, a, it's a cool candle. You light up the middle and all the rest of it sparkles round about. So that's quite cool. And I've got some fairy lights. Oh. I've got this here as well that I looked up. You don't want to look directly into this, okay? Otherwise, you will end up with stars in your eyes. You haven't seen much of this, but there you are. Another wee torch. What might I do with that? Put it on my head when I go running. Uh huh. And it's red lights on it as well. That's quite cool. They'll see me coming in the dark, won't they? It's also quite handy if you go under the cupboard in the stair of having a wee, a wee look around. So there you go. And. Last but by no means least, what's that? It's your night light and it changes colour and that's in your room at night time. What do they all have in common, Grace? What are they all? Lights. They're all a source of light. And as the nights get darker, we know that light's really important, isn't it? Can you think of anything that light helps us with? Yeah. Seeing, absolutely. It helps us see our way. The plants need it to grow. When you think about the solar panels on people's roofs, it gives us energy. And we all feel better after spending a bit of time in the sunshine, don't we? Absolutely. It's good to be in the sunshine and top up our vitamin D. And today, we're going to be thinking about some of the I Am sayings of Jesus again. Now, we've had, I am the good shepherd, the bread of life, the resurrection and the life, the true vine, and today we're going to be remembering Jesus' words when he said, I am the light of the world. There's lots of lights coming in here just now. The sun is so strong outside at this time in the morning. And Jesus said that to some Pharisees. He was in the temple and there was a ceremony called the ceremony of illumination. And there was big candelabras that were giving brilliant light all over Jerusalem. And it was during that ceremony that Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will have the light of life and will never walk in darkness. And he also said in another part of the Bible, not only that he was the light of the world, but that you are the light of the world. You and everybody gathered here as well, that you are to shine brightly with God's love. To shine as bright as a candle, or a sparkler in your hand, or a firework shooting through the sky, or as the sunshine itself, so that others can feel God's love through your helpful and your kind and your encouraging words and your actions. That's a good thing to do, isn't it? Yeah. And I came across a wee poem at the end of the week that said this, it was only a sunny smile and little it cost in the giving. But like morning light, it scattered the night and made the day worth living. And I heard that on Friday after I had spotted Mary Stirling coming out of Tesco. Now Mary never saw me. I saw Mary. And as she passed a couple who were sitting at the entrance of Tesco, she gave them the most beautiful smile that lit up Mary's face. And the couple smiled back. Sometimes it's not a big thing to help bring some light into the world. It can be simple as a smile. So we'll just take a moment to turn to each other and say good morning. Why not, if you can, give a smile and light up this place. <laughs> I'm feeling brighter and warmer already. So we're going to sing again that rem a song that reminds us that we are to be God's light in the world. But before that, let's just have a wee moment of prayer. 
Lord, thank you for Jesus, the light of the world. And thank you that you look at us and say that we are lights of the world too. May we know how much you love us. May you help us to know you better. And may we look for ways to shine brightly every day at home, at school, at the supermarket, and in all the places we will find ourselves this week. For we ask it all in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. So let's sing again. Our song is on the intimations, this little light of mine. Let us pray. Jesus, light of the world, who came among us and shone so brightly with God's love as you lived, leading feet into good and right and true ways, who bore the brokenness of the world on a cross, saving us, reconciling us to the Father and rising to new life giving us hope of heaven and earth made new. We come today to marvel at God's love, its vulnerability and power, to praise God who breaks the darkness with light and to seek your presence in and through the Spirit that we might know and reflect you more in our life. For you are Jesus, the light of the world, who has called us out of darkness and through the waters of baptism, raise us up to be and to live as children of light. Forgive us then, we pray, when we have done or said things which are not good or true or helpful which are not worthy of followers of your way. When we have been unkind to each other, 
when we have uttered harsh words or harbored bitterness or been impatient or greedy, when we have indulged in gossip or allowed ourselves to be caught up in foolish or tasteless talk, or when we have remained silent rather than speaking up, or did nothing in the face of an injustice, blending in rather than shining out. In the silence, shed your light upon our hearts and minds and illuminate within us those things those attitudes, actions, habits, ways that need changing. as we sing and listen and come to your table. Jesus, light of the world, assure us that through God's love we are forgiven. Kindle faith's flame and fan it in our hearts and renew our minds with your word that is life-giving, that our thoughts and attitudes, our words and actions, might better reflect your love and your presence in our lives. So be it. Amen. Our first reading today comes from the New Testament, John chapter 8, verses 12 to 20. Jesus, the light of the world. Jesus spoke to the Pharisees again. I am the light of the world, he said. Whoever follows me will have the light of life and will never walk in darkness. The Pharisees said to him, now you are testifying on your own behalf. What you say proves nothing. No, Jesus answered, even though I do testify on my own behalf, what I say is true, because I know where I came from and where I am going. You do not know where I came from or where I am going. You make judgments in a purely human way. I pass judgment on no one. But if I were to do so, my judgment would be true because I am not alone in this. The Father who sent me is with me. It is written in your law that when two witnesses agree, what they say is true. I testify on my own behalf, and the Father who sent me also testifies on my behalf. Where is your father? they asked him. You know neither me nor my father, Jesus answered. If you knew me, you would know my father also. Jesus said all this as he taught in the temple, in the room where the offering boxes were placed, and no one arrested him because his hour had not come. And the second reading, also from the New Testament, comes from Ephesians chapter 5, verses 5 to 14. You may be sure that no one is immoral, indecent or greedy, for greed is a form of adultery, will ever receive a share in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Do not let anyone deceive you with foolish words. It is because of these very things 
that God's anger will come upon those who do not obey him. So have nothing at all to do with such people. You yourselves should to be in, used to be in the darkness, but since you have come the Lord's people, you are in the light. So you must live like people who belong to the light. For it is the light that brings a rich harvest of every kind of goodness, righteousness, and truth. Try to learn what pleases the Lord. Have nothing to do with the worthless things that people do. Things that welcome belong to the darkness, instead bring them out to the light. It is really too shameful even to talk about the things they do in secret. And when all things are brought out to the light, then their true nature is clearly revealed. For anything that is clearly revealed becomes light. That is why it is said, wake up, sleeper, and rise from death, and Christ will shine on you. Amen, and may God add his blessing to his holy word. Our next hymn is number 489, Come Down, O Love Divine, number 489.
May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. I wonder what the nicest thing is that anyone has ever said to you. If you're like me, then maybe you tend to hold on to the neg negative comments a bit longer and they are easier to bring to mind. But it was while scrolling through Facebook and seeing an advert for Marks and Spencer with the title, How to Sparkle This Party Season, which led to a website full of twinkly tops and shimmering sequins, and no, I didn't buy anything, not yet. That one of the nicest things my mum has ever said to me popped into my head. It was just over 10 years ago, and I'm sure she said other nice things since then, but I was wedding dress shopping with my mum and my aunt, and it really was the best day ever. It was so exciting as we went from bridal shop to bridal shop looking for the one. And I had great fun trying them on, and it was late afternoon when I found it. I came out of the fitting room and stood in front of the huge mirror and started to cry. And my mum looked at me and she said, I think that's the one, isn't it? That dress sparkles. And when you're at your best, you sparkle too. Such a lovely thing to hear and remember and live into especially as we turn to our gospel and epistle lessons that we've just heard and consider that I am saying of Jesus and what it means for us who love him and know him and follow him in our lives. It's a really short passage, isn't it? And when it's read in the context of the gospel, it kind of feels like it doesn't quite belong, that John has slotted it in somewhere. And it's only John who records these words of Jesus. But when we consider the scene, well, do you know, maybe its place is perfect. And what a moment it is. For in this short passage, right at the end, we're told that Jesus says these things as he is teaching in the temple, in the place where the offering boxes are placed. He was in the treasury, the place where there would have been lots of coming and going as people entered to leave their offerings. And it's here during the festival of tabernacle that Jesus utters these words. And I love this for so many reasons that includes the fact that Jesus never misses an opportunity. You see, during the festival, there took place a ceremony called the illumination of the temple. And it lasted for eight days. And during that time, right in the center of the room, there was placed four large candelabras that were 75 feet tall. And it's said that the holy men would dance around and worship and praise God all night long. And that the light from the candle labras illuminated not only the temple, but its light was so brilliant that it lit up all the courtyards in Jerusalem. It spoke of God's presence in the temple. And it also pointed towards the promise of a coming one, a light, the Messiah. It is here in this scene, perhaps as the light is extinguished from the candelabras, that Jesus says, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will have the light of life and will never walk in darkness. What a claim. I'm the one you've been waiting on. I'm the one who's come not to judge, but to show you God's love. I am the one who will lead your feet into the light of life. Well, the Pharisees weren't very impressed. You can't testify on your own. You need two witnesses, so where's the other? To which Jesus responds, infuriates, and confuses in equal measure. You have my word, and you have the word of the Father who sent me. 
John isn't messing around. He wants us to know that the words that he spoke about in chapter one, when he says the words gave life to everything that was created and his life brought light to everyone. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness cannot put it out is Jesus. Is Jesus who is now clearly and directly making the claim about himself. And it's the same Jesus who not only says that about himself, I am the light of the world. But as I've already said this morning on the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew chapter 5, with a huge crowd around him, says, you, you are the light of the world. Like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. Let your good deeds shine out for all to see so that everyone will praise your heavenly father. As nice things to hear about yourself go from others, that must be up there, right? You, you are the light of the world. You are called to shine with God's love. You are called to sparkle and shimmer and do things that point others towards our God. That's wonderful. And yet it's challenging, isn't it? And I think back to my mum's comments, when you're at your best, you sparkle. Well, what about the times when I'm not? What about the times that my sparkle's been dulled? What are the reasons for that? Well, reasons that are in common with you folks. I'm sinful. Sometimes I'm selfish and I ignore God. Sometimes I try to do things in my own strength rather than lean on God, forgetting that I'm not called to be a superhero. Sometimes I do too much and don't make enough time to be and enjoy the things and the people that bring life. Sometimes the darkness can seem so pervasive in the world that I doubt my ability to make a difference. I could go on, but I won't. This is not a confessional. But what is it for you? When God shines his light upon you and your life and your heart, what is it he sees? What are the things that stop you from shining brightly? Who or what dulls your sparkle? And these are important questions, especially when we turn to our second reading, where we hear part of a baptismal sermon, which deals with the nitty gritty of what it means to be a disciple what it means to be a follower of Jesus. And you know what? I don't think it could be any clearer. They were once in darkness, stumbling around in the muck and the sin and the, the fog like this morning. And then they've heard about God's great love for them, of what Jesus has done for them. And Christ's light shines upon them, illuminating their lives, their words, their thoughts, their habits, their actions, their behaviors, and they see themselves for who they are and who they could be in him. This new identity in a way that is good and true and right. And then through the waters of baptism, they are cleansed. They are open to God's spirit, made children of light, called to reflect that love in their living, glowing and sparkling within the Others might see the light, be attra attracted to it, and come to know Jesus for themselves. They are called to point to God, and they do that by drawing close to God and working out what is pleasing to Him. I love the way the message translation puts it. You groped your way through that mark once, but no longer. You're out in the open now. That bright light of Christ makes your way plain. So no more stumbling around. Get on with it. The good, the right, the true. These are the actions appropriate. 
figure out what will please Christ, and then do it. We live in a dark world. The need for light is as great as it always has been. And we, the church, children of light, are called to bear it, to shine, to shimmer, to sparkle, and radiate the love of Jesus. Amidst all the nice things that people have said to you, and I hope you ponder those today and treasure them. Today, well, may we remember Jesus' words. You are the light of the world. And may you believe it. May you trust that you are loved by God, loved beyond all measure by the one in whose image you are made. May your light, Christ's light, shine upon you and illuminate and cleanse the things that dull your sparkle. And may you seek him and learn what pleases him and not be afraid to be different, to stand out from the crowd by growing into our calling and living as children of the light, a child of God, a child with a brother, a saviour, a lord, who is the light of the world, a light that nothing ever can put out. Amen. I'm going to sing about that light now, and in many ways this next hymn is like a prayer. 543. Longing for light, we wait in darkness.
Let us offer our prayers for others. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, you are the light of the world, who illuminates our minds that we might know God. You are the light of the world who illuminates our hearts, that we might receive God's love and forgiveness and peace. You are the light of the world who illuminates our paths, that we might see your leading and follow you into good and true and right ways. We pray that as your church, we would grow more and more into your likeness, fit to be called children of light, living in such a way as to point others towards you. For this world needs desperately the light that you bring. And so we pray for all who are walking in darkness today. Those who do know you and those who do not, who are living in ways that are destructive or damaging to themselves or others. Jesus, shine your light. Those whose hearts and minds are troubled, who consider darkness their only friend and live with depression or despair or torment. Jesus, shine your light. We pray for those who seek to help and care for them, for strength and patience as they journey through the valley of shadows. Jesus, shine your light. We pray for those who are grieving, feeling empty, sad, lost, alone. Jesus, shine your light. We pray for those in war-torn areas of our world, devastated, scared, angry. Jesus, shine your light. We pray for creation and the darkness within it that groans for greening and creation made new. Jesus, shine your light as we fall silent and bring you the prayers of our hearts this day. Lord Jesus, the light of the world, who illuminates our minds, our hearts, our paths, that we might know God, receive God's love, forgiveness, and peace, and follow you into right ways. Hear these our prayers, for we ask them all in your name. Amen. And so, friends, we move towards the table. And as we do so, words that I've spoken often before in this place, 
a reminder that this is the table, not of the church, but of the Lord. It is made ready for those who love him and who want to love him more. So come, you who have much faith and you who have little, you who have been here often and you who have not been for a long time, you who have tried to follow and you who have failed. Come, not because it is I who invite you, it is our Lord, and it is his will that those who want to should meet him here. And so with that invitation, let us stand together and sing our communion hymn, <laughs> number 19, Ye gates lift up your heads on high. Let us pray. In the echo of Alleluia's and Amen's, we come, O God, to this table that you have prepared, and we do so in awe and thanksgiving, pondering the wonder that you who is eternal and almighty, you who called all things into being, you who looks upon us in love, and sees the sparkle and the grime within, should welcome us with wide open arms and smile 
as we join you at the table. A table that speaks of heaven. A place where tears are wiped away. Where death is no more. Where the dawn has come to stay. And where everyone, everyone has enough. What a banquet. What a celebration. All made possible by your amazing love shown so clearly to us in Jesus. And so with creation, with the angels and the saints around your throne, with brothers and sisters, east to west, north to south around the globe, with those beside us, behind us, in front of us, and all the loved ones gone from our sight, who dwell in your light and from, from whom we are not separate. We join in the song of your unending greatness. Holy, holy, holy God, Lord of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Because you, gracious God, have been faithful to us, we will be faithful to Jesus. He promised to be with those who met in his name. He promised to hear the prayers of the faithful. He said that in the communion of bread and wine, he would be present to us as we remembered him. So send now your Holy Spirit among us. And upon this bread and this wine, that we may taste and see your goodness, be embraced by your love, engaged in your service, as we follow you and live into our calling to be children of light. So be it. Amen. <coughs> Among friends gathered around the table on the night when he was betrayed, Jesus took the bread, he blessed it, and he broke it. And he said, this is my body that is broken for you. Do this to remember me. In the same way, he took the cup, saying, this is my blood shed for you. Do this. To remember me. And so we break the bread and share this wine, believing that he who lived, died, and rose again for us will meet us here.
eat the bread and drink the wine. They come as gifts from the God who loves you. <coughs>
The peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Shall we take a moment just to share that peace one with another just now? Peace be with you. There didn't seem an ideal moment to intimate it, but your little glasses, you'll have noticed, weren't collected at the end of communion. But there are some little boxes at the front, here and there, and out in um, the welcome area. So if you just take your glass, pop it into the box at the end of um, the service, or take it home and recycle it there, that would be grand. Is God good? Is God good? Yes. Yes, God is good. Is life worth living? Yes, Yes, life is worth living. Is the best yet to come? Always. (laughs) Always the best is yet to come. Let us stand together and with those smiles on your faces, let us sing our closing hymn, 448, Shine, Jesus, Shine. light of the world and shine and sparkle as you walk with the Lord and the blessing of God the Father Son and Holy Spirit be with you all this day and remain with you forevermore